everybody. My name is Sari Akawanis, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make this awesome Moni's Water Lily. Um, everything that you see in the uh, video today is a um, paper chickadee um, paper flower kit, um, but you actually don't need the kit to uh, do these gorgeous little water lilies. I'm going to show you all the steps and um, it really is universal folds and techniques. So um, anything other than cray paper and you can absolutely make this paper, um, this paper water lily on your own. So um, like I said, this is a paper chickadee um, kit, but, um, and that's a company that I own and I design all the kits and make all the paper and all the learning um, things like, this, the kit comes with a booklet and this video and it's all designed to work within the kit but you can absolutely use it without it. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is take a strip of the yellow paper and this comes in um, in the kit like I was saying but you don't need the kit to make it another uh, good alternative to this would be like um, a yellow streamer from like the party store or even I think most pharmacies even have streamers uh, so you can go and check that out but any just yellow piece of paper will work just fine <laughs> and so what we're gonna do now and this is a little trick to help you save time I'm trimming the white from the um, top and the bottom of this strip because we don't want any of that white to end up on the flower. Although it wouldn't really be the end of the world if you forgot to do that strip and some white ended up on the flower. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fold it in half and fold it in half again and fold it in half one more time. And the reason why we do this is because the more you fold it, the less work it is. Um, so if you fold it three times like we just did, that's going to, um, because now we're going to finally fringe it and the folding it will make it a lot faster. So to uh, finally fringe, I like to do a trick where I take the scissor blade and I rest it on my finger and then I just kind of hold it and I'm not even consciously moving the paper but the kind of subtle differences that each cut will make will hit the paper in a different place and it comes out to be a very lovely fine fringe. So let's just finish up that end and I like to flip it around and um, go from like one side of the paper in and then this side of the paper in um, and I do that because I think it's a psychological thing, but when you're um, fringing something like that, your finger gets a little scared of the edge and it gets, um, your brain kind of gets a little bit scared of cutting your fingers too. So just working from the inside in, like so like towards the middle, towards the middle, it'll come out with a um, much better because um, my, my hand at least gets a little bit skittish with those scissors chomping so close to them. <laughs> So now I'm going to unfurl that paper and I'm going to take about a quarter si a quarter piece of the um, floral wire that comes in the kit and you can also get floral wire at any old any craft store. Um, so if you're doing this without the kit you can also do that. So and this is floral tape and it's the same thing. Um, you can get this at uh, most craft stores as well. And if you've never used floral tape before it is a very peculiar um, thing. <laughs> it has almost no stick at all and the very little stick that it does have is created um, by stretching it. So the act of um, covering a piece of floral wire in floral tape is the act of, um, and I'm just going to set it up so I can get my hand cam, it's the act of stretching it because when you stretch it, it activates it and then twisting the stem. So stretch and twist stretch and twist just like that and we don't need a ton of um 
bulk on the stem. Um, sometimes I'll recommend doing four or five coats on certain flowers, but you really don't need that for this flower because it's gonna go right in that holder and you're not gonna really see it very much. So that's the piece of floral wire and it is covered in some floral tape now. And now I'm just gonna take the fringe that we made and I'm just gonna start Make a little tuft, make a little tassel. So just spin it. And all you have to do is like wrap it. So it's just it's just a pretty easy motion. It's the um, it's not hard. And I really like this flower in particular because it is quite impactful. It looks really cool. Um, and it actually kind of deceptively looks more complicated than it is, which is um I don't know, I always like it when things are, they look harder than they actually are to make because this is actually a pretty simple one to make. Um, and it's all starting with a stamen that we created. Oops. So my paper ripped a little bit. Don't even worry when that happens. It is a very delicate paper that comes in the kit that makes the stamen. And every once in a while it will rip. So when you do that, just kind of secure it with a little bit of floral tape and then keep going. Or if you don't want to, that really is enough of a stamen to, um, to make this flower. But I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. Just like that. Oh, it ripped again. <laughs> I'm not even going to secure that one with floral tape. I'm just going to keep going and see what happens. <laughs> Oh, that was the bad idea. Now it's a little bit loose. It's okay. It was just a couple of inches. It should be fine. And now I'm going to secure that with floral tape. And again, it's this act of stretching it and rolling it just like that. Because floral tape doesn't want to stick to anything except for itself and occasionally other um, pieces of paper. But it does um, stick to itself really well. So now we have our um, pretty little stamen piece and we're going to set that aside for right now and take out the sheet of the, um, the small more slender uh, petals and I'm going to trim right to the edge of the template that's printed on this sheet. I'm actually going to get rid of some of this excess white on the top and bottom too. And this will come in a sheet of three, um, but I've already used the first two and now I'm going to use this one. So now we have the printed template and we're just going to accordion fold this. And you want it to get pretty close to the printed template because the closer you can get um, each fold to that template, the um, more petals you'll uh, get from one strip, which is always good. You always want the most petals from the strip because it's less wasted paper. And um, I always think a nice full flower looks so much better. So now we are just going to watch this in fast forward to skip around a little bit and so you don't have to wash the whole thing. Look at how fast that is going. Wowzer. All done. And now we are going to cut out right on the template. And you actually don't have to cut out exactly on the template. Use the template that is provided on um, the paper or the kind of petal shape that you see in this video. Use it as a general guide, but you really don't have to be exact. Just like no two um, water lilies are the same and especially no two water lilies like that Monet ever painted are exactly the same. You're gonna get much better results if like each of your flowers is a little bit different than stressing out about um, making everything exactly the same because crafting should be kind of a nice unstressful thing. So now we have our little slender petals all cut out and um, we are going to um, glue three of them together. 
And the reason why we do this is because um, they need a little bit of shape, but um, the way that I usually fold a petal um, gives it a little bit too much shape. And I'll show you that in the next set of petals that we do. But on this one, we want it to have just a little bit of shape. And so we are going to take the slender petal and I put a little bit of glue on the, the, um, the base. And now we're just gonna kind of make a little fan. So that's two of those petals all set up. One more. Awesome, just like that. And now we are going to hold the, the set of three and pinch them right at the base, just like that. And now we are going to nestle our thumb into there and we are going to, so our thumb's in there, so we're gonna let go with this hand. And then we are going to, see how the, we pinched it this way? We just wanna pinch it in the opposite direction now. And the contrasting force of those two folds will make a really pretty little um, cupped shaped uh, petal set. And we are just gonna keep on doing that so you can see the kind of time-lapse sped up version, zoom in by. And if you're interested in seeing this in real time, check out the YouTube channel that you're watching this tutorial on because um, I have what's called a slow TV where I just make the paper flower with like no instruction, but in real time. So you can kind of see some of those subtler moves that are zooming in front of your eyes now. <laughs> And there we go, all three are made. So we have all three of our little petal sets right there. And we're gonna get out our stamen again. And we're going to attach these petal sets to the stamen with, these, with the floral tape. And I'll show you that move. It's a little tricky and it takes a little bit of practice, but don't worry if you don't get it at first. It does is floral tape is tricky and you just need to practice a little bit and you'll get the hang of it, I promise. So we are going to position that petal set right there. And you can kind of watch me, you'll stretch that tape around until it loops back onto itself. Just like that. Now the last one. And I think making these three petal, these sets of three petals actually makes this flower um, super easy and very fast to make. You'll be surprised at how many you can, um, you can whip up. <laughs> So now we have our um, pretty little interior set up, or all made. <laughs> and if you like this just the way it is, you can stop there. I always think it's pretty to have kind of a nice variation. Um, so I think that that's a pretty, um, pretty little flower just on itself. But we're gonna round out and fill out the flower um, a little bit more by adding um, an extra set of petals. And this is the second shit the second sheet of petal um, paper that comes in the kit. And you can tell it apart from like the interior petals by, um, by the little bit of yellow that's on there. Now I am just gonna trim flush to that template. And we're gonna accordion fold it, just like we did last time. And I'm gonna show you it in Zoom because why not? <laughs> this one actually um, ended up being like a little bit extra on the end. I'm just gonna trim that off. You might find that if you um, fold it super duper tight to that template, there'll be a little bit extra and that's just built in so that if like the next time you make it, it's maybe not as tight, it'll still work out fine. <laughs> so now I am going to cut out this template 
and we're just gonna fully cut it out just like last time. A little bit of a different shape, but generally the same because they are the same flower. These are a little bit fatter though, a little bit rounder. Perfect, just like that. And now we are going to fold these individual petals um, totally like by themselves. So we're not gonna um, glue them into sets like we did last time. And again, it's a very similar motion. We're going to take the petal and we're gonna hold it in a pinch, just like that. Then we're gonna nestle our thumb right into that cup and we're going to let go of it with a hand that we hold it, held it with. And then we're going to take it just like before and fold it in the opposite direction. And you might get a little bit of tearing happening right there and right there. Don't worry about that. Um, every once in a while it'll tear, even when I make it, it'll tear like really bad and that is unfortunate and you might have to throw that petal away. Um, but you know, if you, if you, um, if you let go at the right time, it'll uh, minimize that. So it's the act of pinching it, nestling your thumb in there, and then you're gonna let go with this hand and then pinch it in the opposite direction. Because if, um, if you don't hold it just right, sometimes there will be that tension. And it's just a matter of practice. You'll get the hang of it. Folding petals is really fun um, and occasionally unpredictable. <laughs> So let's watch the zoom as we finish making these gorgeous large petals. Awesome. Now we're just going to attach, I guess I'll move that glue aside. We only need a little bit of glue for this one. And actually, if you don't like attaching petals with floral tape, and I know it is tricky and you might not like it and you might wanna try some another method, you can always glue those petals right on. You just have to apply the glue to the, the stem part and then um, hold it for um, maybe like 30, 40 seconds um, for each petal. And that's why I like the floral tape because um, once you get the hang of it, it is uh, faster, I think. And now I am just going to attach these petals. I'm gonna show you that in Zoom. Look at how fast it's going. Wow, sir, look at that. <laughs> I'm just kidding you guys. It's all in the editing. <laughs> and look at that, a pretty little um, water lily all ready to go. So now if you want to, you can kind of make it bloom a little bit or you can keep it nice and tight. I always notice in nature in the, in the bright daytime, they get nice and bright. And then when it gets nighttime, they close up. It's kind of a magical little thing that water lilies do. So you can really pick however you'd like this to be bloomed. And it'll um, really just uh, do whatever you want it to. It's a very versatile and super easy little flower. And now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna trim it really close to the, um, to the little end there. And as a final step, we are going to make the holders. And the holders come in a sheet that is um, as a, the sheet is a paper called vellum, which is a really pretty semi-transparent paper that I like to use for a number of different ways. And I like how um, rigid the paper is. And so that's why I think it makes a really good holder because it's gonna keep its shape really well and it's gonna be pretty sturdy. And if you have just one of these little rings that I'm about to show you how to make, um, it'll fall over, but I, I have found over a lot of testing that three is the perfect number because it kind of looks like even like ripples on a pond. I really like it. They're so pretty. And especially like on a nice um, summer evening where you want the table to look a little bit, a little bit special. It's really nice for that. Or um, even just on a bookshelf. I have some on the bookshelves at um, in our living room, and it looks really nice there too. Um, any old way you want to use these water lilies would look really good. They are kind of a non-traditional flower, though. 
for sure because they're so low when they have their own holder and all that. So now I'm just separating these strips into their three separate pieces. And I am going to get our glue back out. And we're just gonna add a little bit of glue right to the edge of that and loop it around. Just like that, and we're gonna hold it for just a, just a second or two. Just let those glue bonds set up. I know I talk a lot about glue bonds, but they're very important in paper art. <laughs> oh, that one knocked over. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the middle one. Same way, we're gonna just gonna take a little bit of glue. Just like that. Awesome. So that is all three of the holders all ready to go. And there's two different ways you, you can display your water lilies now that they're done. You can just pop that right in there. And if it tips over, it's usually a sign that the stem is too long. So if you trim that stem so it's short enough, it won't poke out because basically you want the holder you don't want that stem to go down below that because that's going to push it up and make it unstable. So you can just pop that right in there like that and then it'll, it'll uh, be great. Or if you're interested, you can um, cut out some of the water lilies. And we have um, this kind of a, a star shape that we cut into it. So then the water lily can just slide right into that little star shape. And then you can put that whole thing right in the holder like that. So they're pretty versatile. You can do them both ways. And um, yeah, enjoy uh, making these really easy, um, super fun little water lilies. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with them. Uh, please um, subscribe to this channel where you can get all kinds of different um, flower tutorials and some kind of non-traditional, um, videos as well. I do, like I mentioned before, we do a slow TV where um, I make the flower just in real time, just my hands making it. So if you feel like there was a part that you missed, go check out that and maybe um, watching my hands make um, the flower in real time will help you um, figure out exactly the part that's not quite connecting. And um, give it a try and remember to practice because not everything will come out perfectly the first time and that's okay. Um, even professional artists, especially professional artists, the first time we try something, it usually doesn't come out okay. It's just the um, act of practicing that'll make you really good at it. Um, so yeah, um, subscribe to the channel, go over to my Instagram. It's a uh, Yakawanis, Y-A-K-A-W-O-N-I-S. And I'm posting a lot of videos on um, Instagram TV over there and um, just the regular content and stories and all that. Um, subscribe and tune in there to um, find even more awesomeness. And again, you can get this kit at, um, there's a link down in the description, but you can get it at um, paperchickadee.itsy.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really um, got a lot out of it.